Section A15, Compliance, is the last and final section of 27001. It has three subsections to it. Uh, those are compliance, essentially uh, technical compliance, and then system audit considerations. But really, I'm only going to focus on the first of those subsections, which is legal compliance, because there are a number of clauses under this, and organisations find them quite challenging to achieve. Let's look at the very first one of those, for example, which is Clause A1511 which talks about legal, regulatory or contractual compliance. That may seem very straightforward and certainly it's very logical to say an organisation shall essentially operate legally. It shall comply with national law and it will comply with relevant regulations. And most organisations should say, of course, that's what we do. However, when you get into 27001, and particularly when you start looking at issues like information security, you'll find that I would suspect that no one in your organisation is fully aware of the legal requirements. Even in large multinationals that have specific IT departments, we have found when it comes to auditing 27001, they are not aware of their legal requirements around information security. Now, some of those are obvious. Data protection, for example, and most organisations would know about that. However, there are various other pieces of legislation, and it depends on your jurisdiction as to what those will be, which will deal, for example, with criminal activity in relation to data or criminal activity on the misuse of a computer. Uh, there's various legislation, for example, even at a national level or a federal level in the US, which will deal with exporting equipment, for example, and particularly encryption. Now, these are sort of one-off pieces of legislation, but potentially they could apply to you. And as an organisation, not only do you need to know that, but you also need to know what you need to do to ensure that you continue to comply with those. Now, the challenge is finding those in the first instance, because when you go for 27001, you're going to have to document all of your legal and regulatory requirements. That's a challenge. Secondly, however, you also have to keep yourself up to date. So even after you're certified, in the years that follow after that, legislation changes, regulations will be amended, and you're going to have to come up with a mechanism to ensure that you stay on top of that. And the reason I want to stress it is I think in most organisations this is a new activity for them. It's not a responsibility somebody has had previously, but it's something they're going to have to do for 27001. Now, in relation to some of the other clauses under this section, we deal with intellectual property rights. And really here we're talking about software licensing. And this will require the organisation to make sure it holds licences for all the software applications that it runs. Very simple and straightforward logically, but it can be challenging sometimes, particularly in large organisations. There's also a clause specifically on data protection because of the significance of this legislation to an IT environment. So again, if you're holding personal information on your IT systems, you're going to have to make sure that you comply with the relevant legislative requirements in your jurisdiction. And finally, some of the latter clauses under this section deal with other general issues uh, and related to information security, and particularly uh, some strange clauses to deal with, for example, uh, exporting uh, encryption products. Again, if you're not dealing with strong encryption and you're not building products or exporting products which have them, it won't apply to you. But it's there because just occasionally it will do, and again, you need to be aware of that. Mm -hmm.